Welcome to our new show about education in Reading. I'm Dr. Sherry Vandenacker. I have two children in the Reading Public Schools and I'm an educator and I'm excited to inform the community about some of the things that are going on in our schools. I'm here today with Superintendent Dr. John Doherty and we're going to talk about science in the district. We have so much going on in our classrooms and in our extracurricular activities. So let's get to it, shall we? It's great being here. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for having me. Let's um, introduce you a little bit first, though. So you started your teaching career here in Reading, didn't you? I did. Um, I've actually been in education for 34 years now. <laughs> my first four years, I was at Austin Prep. And then um, I'm entering, next year will be my 30th year in the Reading Public Schools. I, in 1987, I began in Reading Public Schools at Coolidge Middle School as a seventh grade science teacher. Um, became a principal at Coolidge in uh, 1995 and then uh, became assistant superintendent in 2005 and then eventually moved up to the superintendency. Tell us about your college preparation to be a science teacher. Yes, I, I wanted always to do something with science. I had role models throughout my entire career, uh, my education career early on that uh, science was my favorite subject. And so uh, I decided that when I went to college, I wanted to major in biology. So originally I started uh, and, it, and I was at UMass Lowell, uh, U Lowell at the time, I, I majored in biological sciences. And originally I went into the lab science field. Um, and I was headed in a direction where I was going to be uh, doing more of the um, lab sciences, doing research. I actually did some research on, on DNA in viruses and presented. And, um, and then in my junior year in, in college, I decided, you know what, I can't see myself sitting in a lab my entire life. And I wanted to go into education. So I took some, a, summer, a summer program at Brandeis University that year, continued in my senior year at, at U Lowell, um, and then went into a direction of, of education, um, and then got my master's degree at, at what then became UMass Lowell. Um, and then I received my doctorate degree uh, several years later. I went back in 2007, mm -hmm. uh, and in 2009 I received my doctorate at Seton Hall University as part of what they called their executive EDD program. That's great. Do you miss the classroom at all? I do miss the classroom <laughs> a lot. Um, I try to find ways still to, to be involved with students, um, but I do miss the classroom. I miss the engagement of the students. And you, your children also are graduates of Reading Public Schools. Yes, they? yes. Both my daughters have graduated from, from Reading Memorial High School. Um, my oldest, Erin, um, is currently a junior at Hofstra University. She's majoring in dance education and dance. Um, and my youngest, Shayla, uh, graduated last year from Rainbow Memorial High School. She's a freshman at Worcester State University, and she's double majoring in elementary education and mathematics. Um, so both of them are going into education, um, and really that, that's their passion is working with, with children, um, and I, I've already seen that in a lot of ways with them. The apple isn't falling well, yeah. far from the tree. Well, and, and my wife is in education as well, so I think she has a lot to do with it, too. So 1987, you came to the district. Yes. Um, it's interesting you mention that because <laughs> <clears throat> I have um, here a textbook that my daughter brought home when she was in sixth grade. She's in eighth grade now, and I was teaching her how to cover it with the paper bags. Remember how to do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And I was thumbing through the book, and I was astonished to see that it was published in 1987. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and 1987 was actually really a long time ago. When this book was published, what did we not have? No Hubble telescope. No. No space station. No human genome. No personal computers. Certainly no cell phones. No Internet, Internet for the common person. So I'm really excited that we're updating the curriculum because I think it's definitely high time. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so last year then, uh, town meeting approved $150,000 uh, to start this process of bringing us into the 21st century, is that right? That is correct. <laughs> and what did we do in that phase? So I, I'll back up a little bit sure. um, because it, I think a really good question is, why did we wait so long? Uh, yeah, from I agree. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And, you know, there were a lot of starts and stops um, into wanting to, to improve our science curriculum. At the elementary level, we also have kits that we've been using for over 30 years called SDC kits. And I, I think it was a combination of why we didn't do more. To do science, you really have to do it right and you have to invest significant time, effort, and funding uh, because it is such a highly consumable uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were waiting for a couple things to happen. One was uh, there needed to be shifts in the state frameworks. And there were a lot of uh, starts and stops with the state frameworks. They were going to change them, then they didn't change them. Um, and then finally they did in 2006. But then what happened is we had some funding issues in the district, so we were not able to update it at that time. Um, so finally when they just recently updated them again, we realized we, we have to do something. We, we need to change the way we're teaching science. Um, and, and really uh, update what we're doing. And as you said, a lot has changed since 1987 um, in terms of information, technology, things like that. And so this was the time to do it. Um, and so uh, thanks to the work of our teachers, Assistant Superintendent Craig Martin, uh, we've, we've had professional learning communities at the elementary, middle, and high school level in science that have been really looking at how how can we align to the new curriculum frameworks at the state level? Um, and how do we phase this in over the next three years? And the reason why three years is important is because in three years, the state assessment is going to reflect the new frameworks. So um, uh, the, the teachers and um, Craig and um, principals have spent a significant amount of time researching areas. And last year, um, they did some piloting the year before. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the big area that they looked at is, was, was the upper elementary um, at first because we wanted, we wanted to make sure that those students were, were getting the, the, the preparation, or the curriculum, but also the, the practices in how to think like a scientist um, in terms of measurement and experimentation and using the scientific method and modeling and really learning and in thinking a new way of, of inquiry-based science. Um, we want to make sure that they were getting that foundation so that when they went to middle school and we were going to be phasing in at the middle school as well, that those students would be coming in with those skills. So um, the new frameworks and the curriculum you were looking for wasn't only different in terms of content, but it's really a different pedagogical approach. Absolutely it is. Yes, okay. it's much more hands-on. It's what is called inquiry-based where the students are discovering, the teacher is more a facilitator um, of, of, the, of the class. Students are working in groups, so there's a lot of collaboration involved. Um, this is also a big piece if you want to make the connection with social emotional learning, is that students working together, they're learning skills, they're learning how to, how to relate to each other. Um, those are all important skills to have, and when you go into the real world, those are skills you need to have. Because yeah. very rarely do people work in isolation anymore. The program that, um, or the curriculum that mm -hmm. um, the, the grades three through five are using right now is called the No Adam Science Curriculum. This is the first year that the students are fully implementing this curriculum. Last year we did have classes piloting it. Um, in grade six we're also uh, doing some work. Not, we're not doing No Adam, but we're doing a similar approach with online materials, technology, um, also consumables and durables, um, and aligned with the different frameworks for grade six. I should, I should also mention that a big difference at the middle school level between the old frameworks and new frameworks right. is what is being taught in each grade. So under the old frameworks, physical science was taught in grade six, life science was taught in grade seven, earth science was taught in grade eight. And that was called a layered cake approach. What is happening now in science, um, and we're seeing it now in grade six, and it will get phased in over the next two years, is that it is an integrated approach. So you're looking at every year, life science, physical science, and earth science being taught every year at every grade. And it's a spiral approach. And what you're seeing is um, they, will, they will study topics that are appropriate to their developmental age um, and knowledge and understanding. They'll get more complex in grade seven, and then obviously much more advanced in grade eight. And then that will prepare them 
for high school um, for much more rigorous classes in biology, chemistry, physics, and, um, and then any electives that they take. So going back to the elementary then, I brought some of the materials yes. here from the No Atom program. So the students then, in each unit, they get one of these readers? Yes, they do. And they get um, introduction to content and concepts. And then I noticed they do labs, even in third, yes, fourth, they do. fifth grade. These are from third grade, these yes. materials. So that's really different than what I did. I mean, we put some seeds in a cup, maybe, but it to not see what, right, else. right. It, it, what's amazing? Um, first of all, it's a very visual ma material. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something. The vocabulary level is very complex, which is which is good. It, it's it's challenging the students, um, but I think the great thing is that they are writing like scientists mm -hmm. in grade three, um, and then those skills are carried into grade four, and by grade five. I mean, they're writing full-fledged lab reports mm -hmm. um, that are very high level. Um, and we've seen that. I, I, I've had the opportunity to go into many classrooms and watch the No Adam uh, topics in action. And I'm just amazed. Things that I'm seeing at elementary are things that I used to teach in middle school. Right. Um, and the way, the way they are doing it, those are the things we used to teach in middle school. And now to see it in elementary is really exciting. Because that means that at middle school, you could take those skills and even make them to a higher level. Mm -hmm. And the standards themselves um, explicitly mention integrating with the ELA curriculum yes. frameworks and the math as well. Right? That is correct. So the, the other good thing about this curriculum and the program that we're mm -hmm. using is that you are using a lot of the literacy skills that they're learning um, in, their, in their literacy classes and reading, but also the math. You're right. So... Um, you really are integrating those skills as well. Uh, and nonfiction, um, nonfiction is a big part of the, the literacy standards now. Mm -hmm. And certainly science would, would fit that. So it's really, and there's a lot of writing involved, uh, which is also important. Uh, you have an experiential piece also, don't you, in the fifth grade and in the middle school, the, the students are able to go on an overnight trip to nature's classroom? Yes, yes. So, um, Next year, our fifth grade students will be going to Nature's mm -hmm. Classroom. Um, prior to uh, next year, they, they've been going to Camp Borndale. Very similar experience. But, uh, and at the middle school, Nature's Classroom, they've been going to Nature's Classroom for several years, um, both at Coolidge and, and at Parker. And it's, it's a great trip. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of hands-on learning. Um, it is very connected to the types of things that we're doing in the classroom. Uh, it's outdoors, but you also learn leadership skills, team building skills, uh, problem solving skills, all of those things um, that certainly we want our students to be able to, uh, to work with others and, and get very good at. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, there's those two great experiences. Um, the, the nature's classroom at, at the fifth grade is one night, um, and at the middle school level, it's, it's multiple nights. And how is that funded? Those are funded by uh, families. Mm -hmm. um, families are funding that. That is not uh, something that comes out of our operational budget. And, and PTOs, I should say. PTOs mm -hmm. play a big part in that as well. And there are scholarships available. So yes, that no there are. child would have to stay home as a result of... Absolutely. We would not want any student um, to, to be denied the opportunity of experiencing mm -hmm. these trips. My children loved it. Uh, they didn't always love leaving their phone at home. Oh, yes, because that that's, that's a big part really of it. Valued. It's a big part mm -hmm. of it, yes. So um, now in the middle school level, you mentioned having more digital materials? Yes. Uh, so in 6, 7, and in 8, there are a lot of digital materials now. Uh, we have pretty much gone away from the, the, uh, the paper textbook. There are class sets in, in each classroom, but now students are using more of the materials online. Mm -hmm. um, and the advantage to that is uh, it can be updated easier right. uh, so that the 1987 textbook doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it's more interactive also. So you can click a link. You can do interactive labs um, as well as hands-on labs. But the interactive piece, the interactive labs, you can watch video clips um, of different topics. Mm -hmm. uh, really uh, highly engaging for, for the students and they understand and learn the science.
Right, so there's more multimedia. There's less of the back-breaking uh, backpacks. Oh, backpacks, situation. right, right, right. <laughs> and you can never have the excuse of, well, I left my book at school. Correct. And therefore, I can't do That's my homework correct. now. Right? <laughs> what happens if a family can't access um, books online? Maybe they, they don't have internet or devices. So we certainly, as I said, we do have, uh, we still have copies of, mm -hmm. of the actual textbook. Um, there, there are also opportunities where they can use the computers before or after school, uh, Reading Public Library. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe each student, the way it works, and I may be wrong in this, but I believe each student gets their own access code. Um, so they can go on to any computer. It doesn't have to be uh, one at home, and um, they can go online and access the material. So the standards then, the new curriculum standards are different, you said, because they do um, focus more on engagement and they focus more on coherence, right? Where yes. you, they're covering, as you said, the four uh, topics yes. in each grade. Um, now, at the high school level, though, what happens at the high school level? The high school, um, there will be a little bit of integration, but mm -hmm. I, I believe that they're going to stay layered cake. Uh, you do see the topics are more complex. The um, laboratory experience is more complex, um, and you need to go in greater depth into those areas. So. Ninth grade, uh, for now, will remain life of biology. Tenth grade will be chemistry. Eleventh grade will be physics. Um, and twelfth grade uh, will be your AP classes and electives. There are some AP classes that you can take uh, as a junior in eleventh grade. I believe also you can take AP chemistry as a sophomore um, it, as well. Um, we do have a variety of um, engineering classes that you can take as early as ninth grade. Um, that also would complement the standards for engineering, science, and technology. Um, so the, the electives that we have range from environmental science. We have, we have AP physics. We have AP biology. We have AP chemistry. Uh, we have AP environmental science. We have a meteorology class. Um, I mentioned we have the engineering classes. Uh, so we do have, we have a, a forensics epidemiology class. Uh, so we do have various ways that students can expand their knowledge of science um, beyond the three uh, years of, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior. And so in 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, students can take either strong college prep or honors. Correct. And then as they progress, they can also opt for AP. Correct, and correct. And take advantage of some of these electives. Absolutely, too, right? yes. I think a big advantage of this type of continuum, mm -hmm. coherence, in grades mm -hmm. 3 all the way up to 12, um, and teaching the types of science skills that, that we've talked about today, um, it really, I think, opens the door for all kids to want to be scientists. Um, nationwide, we've always had a concern that females maybe not, don't as uh, readily want to go into the sciences mm -hmm. or mathematics or the STEM areas. I think by doing this in your early grades, um, and teaching them the skills and, you know, having them work with others and uh, learning these things, they, they clearly have the capacity. Um, so to be able, they, they're going to say, hey, I can do this. Um, and I've seen that over the years when I was um, involved with the Science Olympiad at Coolidge. Um, you know, the, the amazing things that, mm -hmm. um, that, that females can do in, in, in engineering and mathematics. And, and I think this just gives them the confidence to... to, to you know, we'll to create more future engineers and, and scientists. So it's exciting. Uh, and coding also. Are we doing work with coding? We do. Um, that's not necessarily connected to science classes, uh, but we do have um, uh, coding that our technology integration specialists and our library media specialists um, do different events mm -hmm. um, throughout the school year, both at elementary, middle, and at, at a high school. Um, and we, I, I think every school does the hour of code, but in addition to that, we have computer science classes um, at the middle school level and the high school level where students mm -hmm. can engage in, in, in the coding activities. Um, I think computer science is something that is something to look, we need to be forward thinking about and finding ways to integrate that more um, in, into our curriculum. And it's something we're not there yet, but I think that's something that we need to keep an eye on and move forward with in the future. Now, our students also have a lot of opportunities to do some extracurricular things in science, technology, engineering. 
good they, math too, although we're not focusing so much they on do. that today. Mm -hmm. um, they do. I, I'm very proud of the fact that our district offers a lot of opportunities outside of the classroom mm -hmm. um, that, that really connects to what's going on in the classroom. And you know, I'll start with robotics because that, that's a very popular um, area in, in our community, um, which starts as early as elementary, goes all the way up to high school. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, the first Lego League at the elementary and middle school level, um, which we have over 130 students participating in grades three, three through six, three through seven. Um, and those students are, um, they work in teams. Um, it's run by our after school program. Uh, Sandy Calandrella does a great job with the organization. We have, we have people coaching those teams and then they have an exhibition in February at, at Endicott College, which was very well received this year. Um, at the high school level, I'm, our community is very well aware of the success of our um, uh, robotics team, the Robockets, um, and, and what they've done in the very short time, I believe they've been in existence five years now, um, and have done some amazing things and are competing uh, both regionally, but at, at the national level they've competed mm -hmm. and they've won several um, awards and in, 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 in events. The current senior class was the first group that started with the first Lego League uh, wow. all the way back in elementary school. So. So it's a really nice farm system that's in, mm -hmm. that's starting to happen. And then we also have Science Olympiad, right. um, which has been around for over 20 years now in, in Reading. Um, so both Coolidge and Parker have Science Olympiad teams. The high school has a Science Olympiad mm -hmm. team. Um, and Science Olympiad is a little bit different from robotics um, in that there are individual events. There's usually 20 to 24 events. Um, in all of the different subject areas of science um, and also in technology. Um, and students work in pairs and um, they compete against, against other communities in those events. Um, and as you know, that we've had a lot of success in Reading uh, with our Science Olympiad at the state level and, and um, Coolidge has been very successful, has gone on to the national level. Yeah, Coolidge won the state competition. They did. Is that right? They did. Go yeah, this Coolidge. Year. Yes. Good for you guys. And they're going very shortly um, to uh, Wright State University, I believe. In Ohio. In Ohio. So tell people a little bit about what First Lego League is and what First Robotics League is, if they don't know. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so the, um, it's more than just the robot. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's very I an exciting piece because um, it's, a, it's a team approach. Mm -hmm. And at the elementary level, um, there is the, the, there's a certain task that they need to complete. There's an arena or a playing field. Um, and each year it changes. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a new challenge every year. But there's a presentation piece as well mm -hmm. uh, where students are learning to uh, present to a group mm -hmm. on a particular topic. Um, sometimes it's an environmental topic. Um, sometimes it's, an, it's, it's some other science related topic. So you're getting those presentation skills, you're getting the science and computer and coding skills that, that come with the, the robotics piece. Um, and then when you move on to the high school level, um, the first uh, level it's called, um, there's a community outreach piece, um, there's an entrepreneurship piece, um, there is the actual building of the robot um, and there's a coding piece, a computer coding piece. So it's not just about the robot, it's how do you reach out to the community? Um, and uh, several of our high school students are, are coaches in the elementary level. Um, and how do you do fundraising? Um, how do you um, do outreach to different groups? How do you raise money? Um, so how do you come up with a business plan? These are all 21st century skills that go beyond just the science. So it's very exciting to see um, these students do this. I've had the opportunity to judge the Reading event for the last two years, and I've just walked away amazed at, at what these uh, high schools and what our high school kids are doing. It's scientific thinking, but it's also creative thinking. Absolutely. And, uh, Both sides of the brain. That's right. Thank you so much. We're just about out of time. Okay. Um, it, it's been a lot of fun to talk about science with you, and um, we're going to have the Robockets come in and demonstrate their robot. Oh, that's great. Along that's great. with their wonderful coach, teacher Charles Strout yep. at the high school. So we'll great. look forward to showing some of that.
first robotics competition is a fun, challenging, inspiring science and technology program for kids, grades 9 through 12. It's one in a progression of four programs that make up FIRST, an international STEM organization founded by Dean Kamen, designed to foster 21st century life skills and spark kids' interest in science, technology, engineering, and math, so they become innovative problem solvers able to tackle the world's biggest challenges. In the FIRST robotics competition, teams of high schoolers are given just six weeks to design, build, and program a robot capable of playing a challenging field game with and against other robots. Robots. But it's way more than robots. It's about learning new skills, working as a team, practicing respect, making new friends, finding out what you can do, and having fun. So, hello. We're here right now with two members of the Reading Robotics team. We're here with Akshita Rao, and you're a senior, and with Matthias Kools, and you're a junior, right? How long have you guys been on the Robotics? Um, this is my second year on the team. And this is my third year. I originally came on as a programmer my freshman and sophomore years of high school, but um, my junior year I decided to give business a try. You get to do all different kinds of um, roles on the team, so therefore you really get to expand your skill sets, I'm thinking. So we have um, two kind of sides to the team, so we have a business side and a technical side. So um, the technical side really works with the robot and the mechanical parts of it, whereas the business side raises money and funds the robot. So it's kind of like a mini startup company, and that's kind of our vision on it. So we kind of work to raise the funds to end up building the robot at the end. Great. So tell me about the fundraising. So you need to raise money to build the robot, you just said. But um, what else do you need money for? So a few of the things that we need money for is first, registration. Mm -hmm. uh, in first, uh, you have to register for all the events you participate in, and that uh, takes a majority of our budget. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we we have to do is we have to stock our shop, so we're, we have to buy all the materials we're given and we also have to buy all the tools that we have to use. Um, we also host the North Shore District event um, mm -hmm. at our very own high school field house and it actually takes about most of our funding and to rent out the field house and host the event for about three days and we have about 40 to 45 teams attend and in total I think we get about 5,000 spectators each day. Tell us about the different skills you're supposed to learn by participating in this. Teamwork and leadership and also uh, working together as a team and there are many times where we also work with our mentors so they're kind of guiding us along so we learn through them as well. It's more of a process where um, we try things out if it doesn't work we try something new so it's a lot of testing and trial um, and we're given about six weeks to build our robot. Now you're given um, a set of materials you can use to build it though, right? You can't yep. just use anything you want. You have to build it out of a kit of materials. So we're given a kit of parts at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year, but they don't restrict you to just using that. You're allowed to uh, buy from different companies out there. Uh, there is, however, oh. the restriction of a, a part cannot cost more than some amount that they say every year because otherwise the wealthier teams might attach, say, like a jet engine to the robot. <laughs> yeah, that would <laughs> be that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I think there's like a financial budget of 4000 per robot. Okay, and so. you guys won the engineering award. So um, it was an engineering inspiration award and it kind of combines how our team performs technically but also at the same time how we um, do a lot of community outreach and kind of inspire other kids to pursue engineering at the end. So our key selling point, I think, was the FLL teams, mm -hmm. where we have we have many of our um, team members actually coach the younger teams as well. So right. it's kind of that um, relationship there as well that helped us win. So you got invited to the Nationals, and they're in St. Louis, is that right? Yes. Yep. And you're not going to go this year. I think we planned on going every two or three years, depending on how good our robot is. And we decided to focus more on our, on our outreach activities during the postseason event rather than going and spending time at Worlds. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So that basically it, people, it sounds like, come back year after year and stay on the team, and then they get to um, travel. But also there are a lot of regional events, too. Is that right? Yes. Even outside yeah. of the competition? Now, you brought your robot, right? We did, yes. Right. Yay, let's check it out. So here's the robot. And what do you want us to know about this robot? All right, so this robot's name is Pandora. What we'll be demonstrating here is the climbing mechanism. Hey. Well done. We were very proud of our robot this year, mm -hmm. though I don't, we didn't get picked for the playoffs. Um, it's usually not that that matters, it's about having fun. Thank you so much for building this and coming in and spending time today. You were taking AP exams and yet you pulled yourself away to do this, so thanks a lot.